God made monkeys, monkeys are fun. So let's be a monkey, come on everyone. The best monkey sounds. Who can make the best monkey sounds? God made monkeys, monkeys are fun. So let's be a monkey, come on everyone. The best monkey sound. Who can make the best monkey sounds? <laughs> God made monkeys, monkeys are fun So let's be a monkey, come on everyone The best monkey sounds Who can make the best monkey sounds? And I'm Doug. Welcome to VCC Kids. We are so excited you're here today. Buttons, tell the kids how excited we are that they're here. <sighs> I'm so excited that you're here. What? Buttons, that was not very exciting. What are you talking about, Doug? This is my excited face. Look at how, how exuberantly joyful I am. W Buttons, come on, get excited. I'm just joking. Whoa. Hi, kids. I'm so happy that you're here. We're going to have so much fun today singing and dancing and laughing and discovering Jesus together. It's going to be the best. There we go. Yeah. That's right. Kids, jump up on your feet and get as excited as Buttons is because it is time to shout out our four truths that remind us about who God is and what he has done for us. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Three, two, one. God is good to me. Jesus has forgiven me. No matter what. I am loved for who I am. I am God's kids. And everything is possible with Jesus. Yes! Okay, everybody, take a seat. Those words we just shouted out are truths from God that we can always remember. When we believe them, they fill us with hope and help us keep our hearts focused on Jesus. All right, next, let's check in with our friends to see what we are learning about today. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Hi, kids. My name is Jen, and I'm so excited to be with you today. Did you know that every single one of you is God's loved kid and you can hear his voice? <sighs> well, hi, Stephanie. How are you? Are you okay? Oh, hi, Miss Jen. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, well, I'm glad you're here with us. We were talking about as God's loved kids, we can hear God's voice. <sighs> Okay, Stephanie, I feel like something's really wrong. Oh no, it's okay. I just don't want to derail the lesson with my problems. <sighs> Stephanie, go on and talk to us. What is it? Well, you see, Miss Jen, these girls I know invited me to come to a sleepover. But like, I'm not sure if I should go because they're nice to me, but they're really mean to my best friend. And they gossip about her and talk about her behind her back. <gasps> So, if I go, I'm afraid it will hurt my best friend's feelings, but 
I'm afraid that if I don't go, then they'll be mean to me too and I won't be cool anymore. <sighs> wow, that is a tough decision to make, Stephanie. Yeah, so like I asked my mom what I should do and she told me to talk to God and pray about it. That's a great idea. Stephanie, we were just talking about how we can hear God's voice because we're his kids. What did he say? Well, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, I feel like he's telling me not to go. I don't know. How am I supposed to know if I heard him? Wow. Actually, that's a really good question, Stephanie. Sometimes it's hard to tell if what we're hearing is actually God's voice or something else. But guess what? What? There's actually two things you can do to determine if what you're hearing is God's voice. Um, wait, that's really helpful. Please share. Well, the first and most important thing is to go to the Bible. We know that the Bible is God's word. So if what you're hearing doesn't line up with what the Bible says, then you're not hearing God's voice. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's look at it this way. I know that it would be really hard to give up the sleepover and maybe a chance of being popular and cool just because it hurts your best friend's feelings. But I know that in the Bible, in John 15, God says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Stephanie, Jesus gave up everything to love us. How do you think you should be sharing love with your friend in this situation? Probably not to go, but like, ugh, I don't know, Miss Jen. I really want these girls to like me. What's the other way to tell if I heard God's voice right? Well, the other thing is to seek godly counsel. That means that you talk to somebody who loves you and loves God and ask them what they would do in that situation. So Stephanie, Who's somebody who loves you and loves God that you could go to for advice? Um, I mean, like, my mom gives pretty good advice, I guess. She would be awesome. Let's ask your mom what she would say. Okay. Mom! Okay, wait, wait. We can go find your mom. You don't have to yell for her. Mom! Mom! Can you come here, please? Oh, uh, uh, Stephanie, honey baby, what is it? Mom... I need your advice about the sleepover. Now, sweetie darling, I told you already, you need to pray about that. But mom, I did, and I think I heard God, but I'm not sure, so I wanted to get godly counsel from you. Is that right? Oh, honey pumpkin, sweetie baby, that just fills my heart with joy. So, what do you think God told you? Well, I feel like he's saying to not go. Sugar honey, I would have to agree. Those girls don't seem like they would be a good influence on you with all their gossiping and whatnot and talking about other friends behind their backs. But mom, what if I don't go to the sleepover and they hate me and they think I'm not cool? Well, darling pumpkin, sugar pecan pie, I know God's truth that no matter what anyone else thinks of you, you are God's love daughter. Your mom is right, Stephanie. Yep. You and all of our friends out there are always God's loved kids, no matter what. Hmm, yeah, I know you guys are right. I guess I really did hear from God then. Mom, Miss Jen, I'm not going to the sleepover. <gasps> I'm going to tell them I can't go. <laughs> okay, honey baby, sweetie pie. You just make sure to be loving and kind about it, okay? <sighs> okay, Mom. Thank you for your help today, Miss Jen. Of course. Bye. So, kids, we know that as God's loved kids, we can hear his voice. And if you're not sure if what you're hearing is God's voice, you can go to the Bible or get godly counsel. But we're gonna learn more about that in a few more minutes. What we're gonna do first is everyone is gonna stand up and we're gonna worship. God is here with us. So we're gonna sing and dance and spend time in his presence. Here we go.
was so great. Worship songs are so fun. I'm gonna go follow my sister around the house all day singing that song to her. Oh, ribbons, look at my cool dance moves. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Everybody, let's listen up to see what else our friends are teaching us today. Hi kids, my name is Tiffany and this is my friend Braggy Frog. Yes, hello everyone. I am here to read a Bible story with you today. I am the best storyteller ever, so you're welcome. Okay, Braggy Frog. Well kids, we are so excited that you are with us today because we are going to talk about hearing God's voice. Each one of you is God's loved kid, so God speaks to you. But sometimes it can be hard to tell if what we are hearing is actually God's voice or something else. Well, that must be such a hard problem to have. I can't say that I understand it myself. I always know when it's God's voice speaking to me. He whispers in my ear all the time, Froggy Frog, you are the best. You are the most awesome frog in the whole universe. No! You are the most awesome thing I've ever created among billions and billions and billions of creations. And he's right, I am no big deal. Actually, very big deal. I'm a big deal. Okay then, well, for the rest of us, sometimes it can be hard to tell if what we are hearing is God's voice and we aren't always confident that what we are doing is what God is telling us to do. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Yes, I am an expert on hearing God's voice, so I don't really need to uh, to hear this, but but I guess I'll, I'll stay anyways. Okay, we're happy to have you, Braggy Frog. Of course you are. Well, kids, there are two things we can do to help us determine if what we are hearing is God's voice. Wait, really? What are they? Uh, I mean, um, yes, of course, of course. Why don't you um, tell the children what those things are? Sounds good. The first thing we can do is line up what we are hearing to what the Bible says. And then if we still aren't sure, we can ask godly counsel. Now, godly counsel is simply somebody who loves us, loves God, and is somebody we can go to to ask for advice. Oh uh, yes, well, I never need advice. Everyone always comes to me for advice because I have the best answers and the best ideas. Well, Braggy Frog, we all need advice. And the Bible tells us that all the time. And there's actually a really good story we're going to look at today about a brave lady named Esther. Now, Esther thought she was doing what God was asking her to do, but she wasn't sure. So godly counsel encouraged her. Of course, of course. Well, let's hear it, Tiffany. Okay, great. But before we read our Bible story today, let's shout out some truths about the Bible, God's word. Okay, here we go. So once upon a time, there was a woman named Esther who lived in a place called Persia with her cousin Mordecai. Now something important to remember is that Esther and Mordecai were Jewish. Back then in Persia, people were mean and unkind to the Jewish people. Oh, but that wouldn't happen if I was in charge. I would be so nice to them and they would say, oh, we love you, King Braggy Frog, you're the best. Well, one day, the king of Persia was looking for a new wife to be his queen. He searched throughout the whole kingdom and found Esther. Esther's cousin Mordecai advised Esther that she should pretend she wasn't Jewish because she would be in danger if her true identity was revealed. So Esther hid who she was. Esther and the king got married and Esther became the queen. Oh boy, Queen Esther. You know what I would do, Tiffany, if I were the king? I'd say, hey, Queen Esther, come over here. Look at this. What do you want? Do you want streets? Streets made of gold? Do you want a boat? Let me tell you about my boat. My boat is awesome. Listen, we're going to give you your very own boat, Queenie. How about that? Sounds pretty awesome. Well, meanwhile, there was this guy named Haman who worked for the king who hated the Jewish people. Haman told the king that he should kill all of them. Now, that would be a horrible, terrible thing to do, but... Haman convinced the king, and the king declared that in 11 months, the Jewish people would be killed. So this Haman guy is the bad man, the villain. Oh, terrible. 
So this is when it became Esther's time to respond to what God was telling her to do. She couldn't let her people be killed by Haman's plan, but the king didn't know these were her people. The king didn't know that Esther was Jewish. She had to tell him. Hmm. Well, what did she do? Did she go before him and say, hey, king, thanks for the boats and all that, but uh, this Haman guy, he's pretty bad. We should probably get rid of that guy. Well, Esther was actually scared to talk to the king. It says Mordecai knew what was going on and encouraged Esther to be brave and do what God was asking her to do. He reminded her that God might have made her queen just for this moment so that she could save the Jewish people. Esther knew that Mordecai loved her and loved God and that she could trust him. Mordecai confirmed what God was telling Esther to do. Oh, so this was like Esther's big moment. Oh yeah, that's cool. I've had I've had lots of big moments in my life, like this one time that I decided to enter into this boat race around the world and I won twice. Well, for Esther's big moment, she had to prepare for it. It says that Esther prayed to God for three more days. He continued to speak to her and give her courage, and then she went to go talk to the king. All of the king's guards were surprised when Esther showed up. You couldn't just talk to the king without being invited, even if you're the queen. Oh yeah, but but I bet the king was just like, hey, hey you, peasant, get out of my sight, and and, and stuff like that. Well, actually, to everyone's surprise, the king wasn't upset. He was glad to see Esther. So Esther asked the king if he could come to a banquet dinner so that she could tell him something. He said yes. Oh, every meal is a banquet at my house. It's a feast. It's a fancy feast. I have cats. They're beautiful cats. They're the best cats. Well, later at the banquet, Esther got nervous. She was pretty sure God was telling her to save her people, but standing up to the king was scary. So Esther asked if they could have another banquet dinner the next night so she could talk to him then. Oh, come on, Esther, be brave. Do it. Do what I would do. Be brave. Well, at the second banquet, Esther told the king who she really was and begged him not to go through with the plan to kill the Jewish people. The king was moved by Esther's request and agreed to what she asked. He even signed a new decree to keep the Jewish people safe. Mordecai was right. God made Esther queen so she could save her people. God's power moved through Esther when she responded to his voice. Wow. Well, that was... A pretty good story, Tiffany. Esther was very brave, almost as brave as me. She was very brave. God spoke to Esther and gave her courage, and so did Mordecai. Sometimes we need to have our godly counsel tune into God's voice with us and encourage us, and that is okay. Oh, yeah, but but see, I wouldn't need any help being brave and responding to God's voice, you know, because because I could just stand up to the king, no big deal. But um, I can see how, how Esther or anyone else would need that kind of encouragement. Well, she did, and we do know that we are God's loved kids, and we know that God speaks to us. But sometimes it can be hard to tune out everything else going on around us and tune into God's voice. Or sometimes we think we heard God's voice and it helps to have someone there to encourage us and confirm it for us. Or we know we heard God's voice and it also helps to have somebody there encouraging us saying, yes, you really did hear God's voice. Yes, of course, I, I, I knew all of that, yes. Well, kids, thank you so much for joining us today. That's all we have for our Bible story. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, uh, yes. Goodbye now, children. You are so welcome for me being here. I hope you all have a great day, but of course, mine will be the best day. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Well, kids, please remember, God loves you. God speaks to you, and we will see you later. Bye. What's inside a bonus toy box? It can be really nice or a dirty pair of socks Or an old purple jacket or a broken tennis racket Or a diamond, a nickel, and a half-eaten pickle Or a choo-choo train or a couple of paper planes Or a smelly tiki beer or a broken lawn chair Let's find out what's inside Hey kids, I'm Buttons That was a really good message about how because we're God's love kids We can hear his voice So now it's time for a little something I like to call Buttons Toy Box I have a few questions for you about what we learned Let's see what they are 
if we are not sure we're hearing God's voice, what can we do? Who is someone who loves you and loves God who helps you hear God's voice? Press pause on your screen so you can take time to answer my questions with your parents or your brother or sister or your stuffed animals or whoever's at home with you. Okay, that's all of my questions for today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. That was so great. I hope you got to talk about that with someone at home. I'm so glad you got to join us today. We have one last thing to do together. We're gonna end our time with one last song that reminds us about who God is and what he has done for us. So get up on your feet and let's dance and sing together one more time. Hey everybody, Hi. it's time to sing and dance. So everyone stand up to your feet and follow along with us. Okay. God is good, 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 good. Jesus has more gift, gift, given me. I, 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 I am loved. And every, everything is possible. Great job. Let's sing it again, but extra quiet. Here we go. God is good. Awesome job! Let's sing and dance like a bear this time. God is good, 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 good. Jesus has forgiven me. I, 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 I am one. Every, everything is possible. All right, let's do it again, but this time let's sing as loud as we possibly can. God is good, 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 good. good. Jesus has more gift, gift, gift me. I, 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 I am one. And every, everything is possible. One more time. God is good, 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 good. Jesus has more gift, gift. God is good, 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 good. Jesus has forgive, give, given me. I, 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 I am loved. I am ever, everything is possible. Good night, everybody. All right, that is all we have for you today. I'm so glad you joined us. Be sure to check out the links below for a coloring page and activity guide so you can keep having fun and discovering Jesus at home. Yeah, and guys, make sure to tell your parents to hit the subscribe button so you can know every single time we post a new video. And if you want to connect with us throughout the week, we would love for your parents to join the VCC Kids Parent Facebook group. You can search for it on Facebook or find the link below. We'll see you guys later. Bye! Bye.